Hello, I'm Aaron Marino from Alpha M Image Consulting. So last week's video, we ended with a little rant on lesbian fashion, my second favorite topic. <laughs> okay, first favorite. <laughs> Sorry, E-Train, it had to be done. It's for your own good. But isn't it funny, as soon as I pulled my collar outside of my vest, you guys knew exactly what I was talking about. But this got me thinking about collars, and I realized that your boy Alpha I've fallen down on the job. I've been asleep at the wheel while I've been effing off with green screen and Olsen twins. I should have been covering a topic that is long overdue. And so today, we're talking about collars, the different options, and what is going to look best on you. To start this video off, I thought it would be wise so you guys know what the hell I'm talking about if we started with a little explanation of the different aspects of collar construction. Number one, collar points the tips of the collar. Number two, collar point length, the distance from collar points to where they meet the collar band. Number three, the collar band. This is the piece of fabric that wraps around the neck. Number four, the collar height. This is the height of the folded collar. Number five, tie space, the distance between the top of the folded collar parts where the shirt is buttoned. Number six, the spread. This is the distance between collar points. Great, now you know more than 95% of those out there that are actually selling men's dress shirts. First, let's talk about some of the styles that are available, but maybe on the more obscure side. And by obscure, I'm talking about ugly. Now these styles are out there, but you're not necessarily going to run across them when you're in your local department store or at your men's shop, but they are available. First up, the band collar. Well, would you look at that? It's like a collar without the collar. The only thing missing is a place in men's fashion, but this little beauty is a bit more popular in men's casual button-up shirts, and it sucks a little bit less there, but it still sucks nonetheless. Don't wear this option. Next up, the Stafford collar. Mm-hmm, okay. It's like, um, you know, uh, let's see that again. Yeah, I got nothing, but it does make me smile knowing that there is somebody right now, this very instant, walking around with this shirt on. As they say in the South, bless his heart, which loosely translates to, if I weren't such a polite person, I would make fun of you to your face and throw rocks at your head. Next is the wing up collar. The wing up is most likely going to be associated with tuxedos or formal events. You're not going to wear this shirt to class or to the office, but the next time you're invited to a black tie soiree, soiree, <laughs> I use soiree in a video, <laughs> awesome. You can wear this shirt. But with this shirt, I would recommend wearing a bow tie, not a clip-on bow tie, a bow tie that you actually tie yourself. Now, if you haven't tried it before, it is not easy and you will feel like you are missing a few chromosomes or brain cells because it's difficult. But practice makes perfect and it is very impressive to meet a guy who's actually wearing a bow tie that he tied himself. With that, you wear this shirt, a wing up. So those are three of the more obscure collars. Now let's talk about some collars that you might actually be interested in wearing. First, the most common collar, the standard point collar. The standard point collar is the most common and most versatile collar option that's out there. It is on the conservative end as opposed to some of the other collars that we're going to be talking about here in a minute. Uh, nine times out of ten, you walk into a store, you pick up a dress shirt, it's going to have the standard point collar on it. Unless, of course, you're looking for another option. Possibly like this one. The British Tab Collar. The British Tab Collar is basically a standard point collar with one big exception. There is a tab that connects the two collars together about midway down the collar. Now, this is designed to go actually underneath the tie. What happens is it lifts the tie, giving it almost a slightly arched appearance. More specifically, it looks like this. The look is very elegant and very timeless, but not quite as elegant as the pinned collar. 
The pinned collar is basically the same idea as the tab collar, but instead of that little piece of fabric and that button connecting the two collars, in each of the collar you have a hole that you insert a tie bar through. Same concept, same idea. Same lift to the tie, same snug fit of the collar, but a little bit more elegant with that extra detail of the tie bar. You know we had to talk about it, the button down collar. You know that I'm not a huge fan of button-down collars, but if you are going to wear them, they look much better, and by much I mean slightly better, with casual shirts like this. But there is no place for a button-down collar, I'll repeat myself, no place for a button-down collar in the dress shirt world. No excuses, no ifs, not, but Aaron, what about, no. Dress shirts, no buttons on the collar. Casual shirts if you must. Let's move on. Next, one of my favorites, the spread collar. But a spread is not a spread is not a spread. There is also the wide spread, like the one I'm wearing. Then there's the varsity spread, which is basically a normal spread collar with a curve cut into the edge of the collar. The spread collar is a great option. Whether you go with the standard spread or a wide spread like the one I'm wearing, it's a great option. It is a little bit dressier, so you are going to need to wear or tie a knot that's a little bit more substantial, a little bit dressier than something small like the foreign hand. Why, you may ask? Well, good thing you're here. We'll talk about it. The reason you need to wear a larger, more symmetrical knot, like a full Windsor or half Windsor, as opposed to a small, little, unsymmetrical knot, like the four in hand, is because you've got extra space to fill. And so if I were to wear a small, little four in hand knot, hand knot with this wide of a spread, it would look awkward and like something's just not finished. You know what? Better than talking about it, let me show you. Okay, and here's the foreign hand knot. What do you think? Does it look as aesthetically pleasing? I don't think so. I know some of you are like, yes, God, I hate that big knot that you wear, Aaron, and I understand. But if you're going to wear a small little knot like the foreign hand, I would probably offer a less dramatic spread or a standard point collar. You can't go wrong there, and your foreign hand will work just perfectly. <laughs> they may hate you, fool Windsor, but I love you. And I'm back to the full Windsor. It looks better. The reason is, is because you've got so much extra space with the wider spread collars to fill. And so the larger knot, it, pff, didn't I cover this already? All right, another variation to the wide spread collar is the rounded spread collar. Think of the rounded collar as basically a spread collar with the tips cut off and rounded. Next, you may have heard the term Italian collar, not to be confused with a Colombian necktie. Mm, it won't happen again, Miguel! The Italian collar comes in both point and spread varieties, but they messed with the proportion of the collar. If you see a collar and it just looks a little bit off, a little bit funky, the proportions are just a little bit odd, typically it's going to be an Italian collar. Uh, they just made the front a little bit bigger, a little bit longer, just a little bit Funk the bag, funk the funk. All right, so those are the different collar options. But now, the million dollar question which collar is best suited for you and your face shape? Or do you even determine it by face shape? All right, unfortunately, there is no right or wrong, there is no black and white answer to this question. Um, you ask 10 different style professionals or experts or tailors or whoever, you're going to get 10 different answers, uh, chances are. Some people think that you should wear collars that contrast your face or head shape. Give you an example. If you have a round head or a big square jaw, they say you want to wear a collar that's a little bit more angular, like the pointed collar or maybe the tab collar. And basically the thinking and thought process behind this is that it's contrasting your head. You don't want the same shape because you want it to balance in a contrasting way. Does that make any sense? But then there are some people that think, hey, you got a big fat head, guess what? Go with the wider spread collar because it's, it's consistent and sort of matches your head shape. And so somebody like me with a pointy pin head Angular, I would want to go with something like a standard point. The spread just doesn't work for me. 
I think it works just fine, and I think it'll work just fine on you. Here's the deal. You want to choose a collar that you like. Stay away from anything that's overly dramatic. There are collars like some of these Italian collars that are very long. And if you've got a real long head, having that real long collar might make your head look that much longer. Collars do come in different heights or depths. Just because it's a, a style or a cut like we've been talking about doesn't mean that you can't have bigger spread collars or bigger points. They come in different sizes. Uh, the idea is to get something that's in the middle of the road if you're unsure. They have some point collars that are real short. They have some point collars that are real long. Some spreads that are real short like the ones I'm wearing, but I, there are also other ones that I own that are a little bit larger. Now, if you've got a big head, go with a bigger collar. If you've got a small head like me, go with the smaller collar. Is this making sense? Basically, it's up to you. Make sure that the size of the collar is more consistent with the shape of your head. <laughs> okay, it's better for me to show you because apparently me no talk so good. Um, all right, here's a medium size spread collar, okay? Here is a small size spread collar, like the one I'm wearing. Put them together, can you tell one's One's a little bit shorter than the other. <laughs> they come bigger than this. <laughs> In here, crystal clear, but somehow from here to here to here, it got all jumbled the freak up, and I don't, I'm so con damn confused right now, I don't even know my name. It's Daddy. <laughs> you can call me Papi. I say, um, I don't know why I do Latino, like, gangsters. <laughs> It's my inner gangster, my inner Lati- Anyway, hopefully you got something from this. There is a chance, a small chance, you're more confused now than when you started watching this video. And if that's the case, do some internet searches. You'll find lots of information that, like I said, is giving you all sorts of different advice. The bottom line is find something that you love, that looks great on you, in your opinion. I promise. You're going to feel great. You're going to look great. You are going to be the man in that button-up shirt, whichever collar you choose, except some of those first collars you choose. If you chose some of those and you see me, I'm going to be like, dude, bless his heart.